Welcome to The Shooting Show. This week we follow Chris Dalton on roebuck hunts in southwest Scotland. We're trying to do a bit of maintenance, but um, one of the things we're trying to do is film a robot. Um, they've eluded us so far. I've been out with Shaz a couple of times and lots and lots of does we've seen. Uh, but the robots have kind of been a bit, proven a bit difficult. To be honest, the time of year now, we're into kind of late June, early July. Cover's actually terrible, so it's, it's really tricky to find the deer in the first place. But they're kind of going a bit what I call pre-rutty and the, the books have been a little bit difficult to find. Lots of does, I mean they're feeding young about at the minute so they're moving. Um, the books, the smaller books move about quite a bit but they're kind of looking over the shoulder all the time for the big lads so they can be tricky and the big boys just with the kind of, we've had very sultry kind of warm midgy conditions up here and, and they don't like it and they tend to get into the thick cover. So we'll get a little predator on. rifle I'm using at the moment is the it's 243 but it's a Hainel. thank you Zosha it's a Hainel Jaeger Sport 10 lovely rifle what I particularly like about it is the really good razorable cheek comb so you can really get the thing set up well um, my Opter optics on it so it's a good combination it's accounted for a few deer already hopefully it can for another one this morning Nice positive bolt action, four shot magazine on it, uh, magazine, which is a good number, I think. A little bit of spare capacity. got into a doe actually that came right into me I mean we actually got down with the dog on the bipod because initially just seen the ears in the in the sort of cornfield where well, it's a rye field actually and then it kind of walked up and it was curious it walked right into us um, within about 10 feet which was really good but unfortunately no book to me that's what makes stalking I'm really not interested in pulling the trigger out of season anyway but I don't care if we don't see another deer this morning. When you've got a deer that close just to be able to watch it, I just think it's a privilege. And um, we're going to continue and hopefully we'll try and find a book, but I think that's just magic. You've got a little doe. She, she was obviously aware of something, but and the wind's wrong. The wind's actually so get it. What you doing down there? She's still quite happily gone off down there. She's browsing down in the bottom of the bottom of the field. I thought there might have been a book tagging along, but there is a young book up here. She's a youngster. And then a little bit further on, there were a, there were a couple more does appeared. Still no book in tow. Got another doe just in front of us on the edge of the field. Still can't see a book with her. The dog's been indicating all the way on, but she's obviously been laid down. You can see where she got up and she's shaking. Don't know where the books are this morning. There's normally a couple of youngsters kicking around here, but the, it could well be it's a nice morning. Often this time of the morning they'll be laid down. That's why I've been really careful looking. That doe there, she just stood up not long ago, so she'd been laid in the field. It's quite pleasant, it's cool, there's no flies. So I'm always wary, I'm looking for a deer laid down, not just one kind of stood up and obvious. So then we went to another plantation, and again, two more does and still no book. Doe number three just walked out, I was getting quite giddy there, I thought it was a book. She's a 
mature animal. Right, we'll head back the other way. I can't see any bugs with them. She's interacting with that youngster, so we'll move and check another little area out. So I kind of sacked it. So at the moment, deer are winning hands down. So actually, uh, Graham, the following day, Graham was helping me out, do some maintenance. I said, we're getting around repairing boxes. It's a good time of year to do that. And as a thank you, the last morning, we kind of got everything done early. I took him out for a, a bit of a stalk, uh, see if I could get him a book. And finally, we did manage to get the book on camera. Absolute corker, cracking book, really good stalk into it. Had to wait a long time because it was in quite a long, you'll see that was in a kind of a grassy meadow field. So it was a quite a long wait for it to come clear so that he had a nice clear shot on the on the book. But anyway, we've got all that on camera. So eventually, after quite a lot of trying, um, job done. Where is it, Josh? Show me. Show me. You'll see the dog working quite nicely as well. That's the benefit of a dog in cover. She's indicating so I can kind of see the, or well, try. I know there's deer there, whether I can see them or not, it's another thing. And then the other thing we thought would be quite nice is we've, I've skinned a deer off this time. A lot of people ask me how to do that. There's several ways you can skin a deer. There's no right or wrong way, but you can certainly do it in a way that you don't get as much fur on the carcass. Now this is quite a tricky time because the deer are coming from winter to summer coat. So there's a lot of fur coming out, although it's a young book that we're going to do this morning, so that's kind of mostly changed. So it is quite a tricky time to, to skin a deer without getting a lot of, the, a lot of the, the, the fur on the meat. And then that just causes, a little, it's not a problem, but it's just quite nice to have the thing all clean. So we'll kind of show you the process that I do. Young yearling roebuck, um, shot now probably five days ago. We're trying to get some shot on film actually and not doing well we can shoot them when we're not got the camera and then every time shazzes out we move the camera they've been evading us but anyway we'll keep working at it so this was shot i like to hang a row if i can for about about seven days ideally um chiller in there sits at three degrees i think between seven eight days is is ideal for the carcass doesn't matter if you do it straight away it's not a problem some people haven't got facilities you need to do that especially at this time of year um, all that does is it kind of allows the meat to tenderise a bit and, and I think that's the optimum for raw. I tend to, if young red I would hang for quite a lot longer. I mean cattle really, sometimes you know, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, bigger the animal. So reds I tend to leave if I can for a fortnight. Um, and basically the equipment that I use, I mean there's obviously the gambrel that hangs the, the deer which we'll use, but also a one handed piece of kits, a snare loop. I'll show you how we use that later on, but that's basically to go around the front legs. Now, no right or wrong way. Some people start from the back and they'll skin down the top of the, the rear haunches and then peel it back, open it up that way and then kind of work all the way down. I personally prefer to work from the front. doesn't matter either way. The reason I work from the front is if there's a lot of damage on the deer or damage on the deer, which invariably there will be if it's been a heart-lung shot, this is the area where the damage is. So really this is the messy area. So my theory is I might as well start working around the messy area and then work front back. The area that's generally the best quality meat is around this area. So essentially I'm skinning that by pulling the, the fur down effectively that way. So that means that any fur coming off the carcass is, is if you like, is pulled from the outside on the, on the skin. So essentially you're not getting fur all around the area of the haunches and the saddle around the back. And that's sort of achieves less, a cleaner, carcass if you like once you've kind of done the process but I say it's not right there's no right there's no wrong down the front of the leg just and just basically open that up and then what I'm going to do then is just free off the, the fur from around the foreleg and once you get to that point then you can actually start to ease it down I won't go too far with it I'll do the other one so basically knife down work it right down to the chest area and then essentially what I'm doing is freeing off the fur. Now a carcass is easier to skin when it's fresh so if you actually skin a carcass just after it's come into the larder while it's warm then the fur actually comes off the skin actually comes off a lot a lot easier however because there's very little fat on venison 
if you're going to hang a deer for four, five, six days, you really want to leave the fur on, the skin on. Stops the meat drying out. So hang it with the skin on, uh, and then essentially, once I've skinned this off, it will go in the larder for a day. And all I'm doing here is I'm just kind of working down the side of the chest area here, and I'm going to expose that so that when I pull all the fur down, the skin down, it comes off nice and easy. As I say, heart lung shot deer, which probably most deer are shot in that region, you've got quite a lot of damage here, so it doesn't matter. Just, skip, just clean it all off, skin it all down, and then you can start to get rid of any contaminated meat or anywhere where there's blood or bruising, uh, so that the, the chef, namely the Memsab, actually only gets good quality meat. And never sacrifice uh, quality for quantity. Is this is where I'm going to kind of suspend it now. So this is the snare loop. Um, it just allows me to suspend the front end of the carcass. Sort of lock those around the forelegs. And then I'm actually going to hang this, hang this deer up to go through the next process. So again, another good idea, keep both on because it gives you a chance to control the deer. And for the next part of the process, we'll work on the on the gambrel. So again, you can you could rig anything like this up in a in an outbuilding or anything, just to, something to work on. I say we would have we would be doing this inside, but I'm only doing it out here for obvious reasons. So essentially, now I can work down and peel back. And the beauty of doing it this way is, you can see a bit of fur coming off. I mean, it's losing fur by the you can see where the coat's changing colour all the way around. So obviously, the old winter coat's coming off, you know, in great lumps. So this is probably the most tricky time of deer to skin a deer without getting tons of fur on the meat. What, we get, what we're doing by doing it this way is we shall pull now the pull the jacket off if you like and it will work down and there'll be very little fur around the area of the haunches and the saddle. Okay right I mean it's neck shot deer at front end so um, that's where the kind of damage is very little damage actually so most of this carcass is, is usable there's no damage in the chest area so essentially all we've done now is just peeled that back so we've got the situation now where the fur is hanging down and it, it naturally lending itself to pulling it down now again we would use a winch for this inside the stable so i could actually winch the carcass up so i'm working above my head which makes it a bit easier but again you know just to show you that you can you can use any sort of facility um, and essentially now very little need to use the knife I'm simply going to pull the fur back and just keep working down either side. Till we get to the top of the haunches. I'm just easing it down, not ripping it, just easing it down. But you can see what I mean now, basically the fur He's not touching the carcass so, sort of from here now it's coming down really clean there's, there's there's nothing much on the there's no fur getting onto the meat makes it a lot easier when you're in the butchery process and again i'd be up on the on the winch for this which makes it a lot easier and that essentially is the carcass skin now i had a guy one of my stalkers up here the other day who's been stalking for years who asked me if he could butcher a deer and skin a deer while I was here, he was here for four days. And it took him 45 minutes to skin the deer. If I was doing that at proper speed, that's a probably a two minute, three minute process. And then I think over future episodes, we, we're gonna do a little bit of butchery, just a little bit, just to tag on, because we eat a lot of what we shoot. I think it's a good message we need to be portraying. And also maybe just show some of the cuts that, that we, um, you know, we use for the Memsab in the house to prepare, you know, um, some nice meals. In fact, we had venison wellington last night, which was superb, using some raw strip loin. So we thought it'd be nice just to tag a few bits and pieces on. We do lots of filming of stalking, shooting deer, the growlicking side of it, but we've pretended so far, we've not kind of done anything on the, what happens to it then. Uh, and, and quite a lot of deer we use here, we, you know, we're all about self-sufficiency and the, the, the ethics of, of stalking. So it's a good message to actually show what we do with the thing when we've uh, when we've got it in the larder. One of the other things I'm using a lot now, Merkel clothing um, supplied by Viking. Um, fantastic kit. I've never really got any experience of, of Merkel gear. I mean, um, 
really really impressed good range of stuff these lightweight fleeces are great for summer stoking um, so I've been out with them now for about I think probably three or four weeks and, and really really impressed with the kit the rifle um, is a Hainel rifle that we're using um, Jaeger Sport 10 in 243 again fantastic rifle really really accurate out of the box and again not a rifle I'd experienced of myself clients I've had clients out with them um, but very very good rifle very impressed so we'll continue to test that over the next few months and see how we go in fact we're looking at getting one in 308 shortly to set up for the reds because we'll be on the reds shortly this dog's molting um, so we'll see how that performs on the reds slightly longer ranges Chris relying on some canine assistance there. And now, it's the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. Both remaining candidates for Prime Minister have said they won't further restrict gun laws if they get into power. Jeremy Hunt pledged to base all his policy decisions on evidence and never introduce any undue restrictions on gun ownership or the list of wild animals it is lawful to shoot. Meanwhile, Boris Johnson said it was not a priority for him to change any gun laws. A result in the leadership race is expected in about two weeks' time. There was controversy surrounding one of the candidates, however, as Jeremy Hunt said he would hold a free vote in Parliament on repealing the ban, but then appear to U-turn on his pledge just hours later. If victorious, he could become the third Conservative PM in a row to promise a free vote and not deliver, after David Cameron and Theresa May did the same. The Countryside Alliance said the Hunting Act represents an ongoing injustice that should be addressed, and that it has done nothing for animal welfare. The Royal Signals Annual Corps Championships returned to mark the regiment's 99th anniversary in June. Soldiers of the Blandford Base Garrison seized the opportunity to soak up the sun and smash some clays. New recruits were joined by regular members of the Army team and Olympic shooters Matt Coward-Holly and Augusta Campus-Martin. The duo were invited to join the week-long celebratory event to give the military's newest shooters a taste of what clay shooting can offer. And finally, the number of firearm certificates on issue in the UK has risen again and is now at its highest level since 1987. FACs rose by about 2,000 and the number of actual firearms covered rose by about 19,000. The number of shotgun certificates also rose slightly. And although just 6% of all certificate holders are female, the number of women shooters overall has risen too. That was the Shooting Show News. Well that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show.